Welcome to Do We Have the Answer, Ocean County Library's newest podcast where we answer questions submitted by you, our customers and listeners. My name is Laura, and I'm a librarian at the Ocean County Library, and I am joined by... I'm Kate, and I'm also a librarian here at the Ocean County Library. All right. Well, good morning, Kate. Good, good morning, to see you Laura. today. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you're listening to us. I don't know. Um, So really quick, I just want to explain how this podcast is going to work. This whole podcast is going to rely on the listeners, so we need you to submit questions. So to submit a question, we're going to ask you to visit our website at www.theoceancountylibrary.org. Then you can search for our events page. And then from there, if you just find the events for Do We Have the Answer, if you click on those links, it'll bring you to a form and you can submit all of your questions. And just a reminder that we won't answer every question in the order they're received. Yeah, we're trying to keep the content of each podcast um, kind of similar, kind of keeping a theme for each podcast. But yeah. keep listening. We're going to answer you know, everything we possibly can. Absolutely. So get those questions submitted. We are looking forward to answering those. So, Kate, we actually do have some questions to answer um, this morning, which I'm very excited. Mm -hmm. And our first question actually deals with our namesake, the Dewey Decimal System. So the first question that came through was actually, how do you do Dewey? (laughs) (laughs) Which is actually a pretty funny question because I think a lot of our library users think that all the time. So we're going to explain in really, really simple terms the easiest way for you to find um, books using the Dewey Decimal System. This is pretty much going to, we're going to focus on like nonfiction because the numbers I think is really what confuses people. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much what I say to people is, um, say someone comes in and they're looking for a book on like clothing, right? So Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to do this all by yourselves, folks, you can just go to our card catalog, you type in clothing, and then you're going to find a bunch of books, and then you're going to find the call number. Like, it'll tell you what the call number is, where you can locate it in the library. So you're going to write that call number down. So then you have it with you, right? Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. This is just funny, because we're so used to this. You know what I mean? So it's hard to explain in, like, you know. Yeah, um, of course if you're not used to this every day. Clothing can be in different sections. So it really, you have to narrow it down to like what it is you're looking for about clothing. Like, is it, you know, customs, like cultural customs of clothing or just like style and fashion? So once you like narrow down exactly what your topic is, you'll write down the call number that you see in the catalog. So let's say it's 646.32. Let's say that's the number. So there's a decimal point in there, and I think that's where people get nervous. I know that always made me nervous. I think what we mostly tell people is just focus on the first numbers, like the numbers before the decimal point, right? Right. So um, at the end of every shelf in the library, there's labels about what numbers are down that shelf. And actually, sometimes I find those numbers confusing because it's like, like a a range a range of numbers that's why i think focusing on the before the decimal point is really like what can get you to where you need to go so if you're looking for fashion and it's 646 find the 600s and then just look at the end and find like 64 you know take it number by number like that's the easiest for me and that's that's what i do sure So then when you find what aisle to go down, you go down that aisle. And then you just look along the spines of the books, go to the six fours in that area. Then you just go to the next number. So six, four, six. So look for six, four, six. And then once you get to that section, that's when you can just move to the after the decimal point, right? Like, because I think then too, that's where people just get so confused. It's just take it number by number. There can be a lot of numbers after that decimal point. Exactly. I know. I know. (laughs) Depending on how how intricate that, um, or or how specific you're going into clothing. Yes. You know, like you mentioned um, fashion. So maybe it's fashion in a specific country, Mm -hmm. and then within that country, a specific, um, 
Is you know. it like shoes? You know, like right. a garment or something right. like that. Or, right. you know, a time period. Like that's going to have a different. So there's so many facets to this. But I think that's where people get hung up. It's like, don't get that overwhelmed for it. Like take it number by number. Um, and don't forget, there's always going to be somebody at a service desk. If you try to, um, you know, navigate through the Dewey Decimal System mm-hmm. and it's it's just it's not working for you, you can always, um, you know, ask somebody at a service desk. Absolutely. We can even walk you through it as we're walking you through the stacks. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know, you can ask that person, can you walk me through um, how you're doing it in your head mm-hmm. to kind of explain? Yeah, Absolutely. So, yeah, so it's just like you shouldn't be afraid. And like Kate said, like, we're always there to help you. The Mm -hmm. librarians, the library assistants, everyone's there. And we'll be more than happy to walk you down to the aisles to find your books. Um, So really quick, just like a quick little thing about Dewey. There is a method to the chaos of the numbers. (laughs) So just really quick, like each section, each number is considered a main class. So there's 10 of those. So it's 000 through 900. Then when you break down those, there's a hundred different divisions. I know this sounds like science, right? Or yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like a class of, um, what is it? The, the, um, the kingdom file, file. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Not a clue. No. Oh no. I'm just, when you said that it was reminding me of like class, um, kingdom, phylum. Oh from, my gosh! Yes. yes. Oh <laughs> goodness! Yes. Oh, that took us way back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah. So there's um a hundred different divisions, which is actually the second number. So let's just take sciences, natural sciences, for example. That's the five hundreds. So when you get to five ten, that's mathematics. But then 520 is astronomy and allied sciences. So it's all broken down. Then the third number is actually the sections. And there's a thousand of those. So there's a thousand different sections. And then after the decimal point, that's where it, that's where it goes a little wild, and um, the numbers can just keep adding. But what's really interesting about the Dewey Decimal System is it has evolved over the years. It's it had to. Um, I so, didn't actually know that. Yeah, yeah, okay. no. So you know, when it first came out, it was. I mean, it was in depth, but it was very archaic, you know, like sure. based on things um, from when you know computers came around. They had to add all of that stuff because remember. The Dewey Decimal System was published in 1876. That's when it went live for uh, people to use. But the Dewey Decimal System, it works. It's been around for a long time. It's used in hundreds of countries Mm -hmm. and thousands and thousands of libraries use it. Stayed around for a good reason. And, um, you know, don't be afraid of it. That's all. Don't be afraid. Don't let it prevent you from coming to the library, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, um... I remember being, oh gosh, I was right out of college and I was, I chose one career and that wasn't the career that I I stuck with. And I was telling a friend's mom, you know, I'm going to become a librarian. Mm -hmm. And she kind of like, I don't think she meant to make the face that she made. And I was like, oh, is she disapproving of like, I, you know, I didn't know where she was going. So I, I just kind of said, you know, I was explaining some stuff to her and it turned out that she said, I haven't been to a library in years. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, that's, you know, that's silly. We mm-hmm. should go one day. Yeah, like, you yeah. know, we were, we were so close to the Tuckerton branch at the time. And um, I said, how come you haven't gone? Mm-hmm. And she said, I don't know how to use the Dewey Decimal System. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I looked at her. I said, there's so much more to the library yeah. than the Dewey Decimal yeah. System. Yeah. And there's so many people who can help you. Mm-hmm. And it was, she was, she was okay after that. Yeah, and it made yeah. so much, you know, more sense why she was looking at yeah. me sideways when I told her I was going to be like, well, it's very funny. In. It's so funny when you say that because I have memories of being like in first and second grade and you go to library, you know, yeah. like your library class. Yeah. And, you know, I might date myself a little bit, but um, at our school, we had the card catalog so with yep. the little, you know, index cards. And I remember just being like, I don't understand this, you know, like I'm, I'm going through these cards and I have no idea. So actually I think that is what might turn people off a little bit, you know, they're, they're thinking back to what they did when they went to school and stuff sure. like that. And um, it's so different now. So different. So different. So different. 
and, and it was actually funny because when you were uh, when you started answering the question, mm-hmm. you said go to our card catalog and oh, <laughs> funny. oh yeah. <laughs> And Old habits just, are hard yeah, to break. Yeah, no, it was just funny. I should you know, say, yes, our oh, online catalog. Yeah, no, it's, it's just one of those things where yeah. I do remember that. I remember going into, yeah. you know, we had yeah. we had a line of computers. Yeah, I don't think any of the stuff was cataloged no, at the time. No, no. It was in those was really all... beautiful dressers. Yeah. With all the, oh, goodness. I know. I didn't know what was on them or, you know, no how idea. to do it. And but... I just remember, like, going through the cards, and I'm like, what am I even looking at? You know, like, second grade brain. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, there's plenty of people there to help you find what you're looking for. And there's something for everyone there, and we'll help you find it if you need it. Yeah. But it's also fun to just come and explore and, and try Dewey yourself, you know? Try looking for stuff, and um, it's fun. And speaking of... Things that people feel might keep them away from the library. Um, our second question: I have late fees. Will you know when I walk in the door? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the immediate answer to that question is no. We have no idea what your finds are when you walk through the door. It would be very interesting if our world was kind of like The Sims and we had little little quote bubbles over her head. Oh my and, God, I love the Sims. And, you know, Laura walks in the door and she has, you know, a little bubble over her head yeah. that says like 25 cents. So she <laughs> walks in and <laughs> a little alarm goes oh, off. But gosh. no, that, that does not happen at all. It's nice this question came in because this, um, when I worked teen services, summer reading would come around mm-hmm. and the kids would be like, oh, I, I can't get my books here. And I was like, what do you mean you can't get your books here? Yeah. And they're like, well, I have some, some fines on my card and mm-hmm. I can't take anything out. And um, back then, that was like 2013-ish, I would say to them, I go, well, you only have 15 cent fines. That was, you know, yeah. that was, that's okay. You can still take yeah. stuff out. So this question came in prior to July 1st. Um, and for those of you who may not know, on July 1st, our library commission at their June 15th meeting approved the Ocean County Library to go fine free. So what fine free means is you will not have any late fees on the items that you take out from our library. You will have due dates just like you always mm-hmm. have. You can renew your items, which still automatically renew as Mm -hmm. long as there's no holds in the queue. And then after your due date, so let's say you take a book out, you're able Mm -hmm. to renew a couple times. After that due date, you have seven days to return the title. Should you not return the title, you are charged the price of the book. But as soon as you bring that item back, it's taken immediately off of your account. Exactly. The other thing to remember, too, is there's so many things you can do with the library, even if you have fines. Let's just say you don't bring back six or seven books Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. and they're charged to your account. Just like normal, once you reach the $25 limit on Mm -hmm. your account, some of your privileges will be suspended, like taking out items and using some of our Mm e-resources. But... There are so many other things you can still do here. So like I mentioned, when you walk in the door, we're not going to know. Yeah. So if you're in need of a computer or to print something, that's not going to stop you. No. If you need to browse real quick and just jot down some information, Mm -hmm. that's not going to stop you. There are some items that need to be returned on time and Mm -hmm. will accrue some sort of charge on your account, like interlibrary loan items, because they're not owned by us. So um, so we have to return those. Yes. (laughs) So not only do you have to return them to us, we need to return them where they came from. Um, Should we explain what an interlibrary loan is? I was just going to ask that. Because if you're afraid of Dewey and you haven't been here in a long time, you might not know all the other exciting things you can do at the library. So an interlibrary loan is something that you can do if you're looking for an item. Like, say it's something a little older and it's for school or something like that. Like you're writing a paper. We might not own that title because it's either really old or it's just, you know, it's textbooky, you know, very specific. We don't keep textbooks. Yes. We don't keep textbooks. Textbooks. (laughs) Excuse me. So you can actually um, submit an interlibrary loan request. You can just visit one of the desks, you know, and one of the staff members can input a interlibrary loan request where we throw out that request to other libraries um, throughout the state. And it even opens up throughout the country. Right. 
and who whatever library grabs it first it can take uh, anywhere from up to like a week to like six months to find a title right. but we try our best to find the title and they'll they'll send the book to the library here for you to pick up um so like kate was saying you'll be charged five dollars if you don't pick up the book right and then the same thing if you fail to return the book there's going to be a charge um after that but so that's what an interlibrary loan is so just because the book might not be available at your library here we can put a search out for it and we might be able to get the title for you yeah the cool thing too is part of our website there is a request form on there where you can submit your own interlibrary Mm -hmm. Uh, loan request. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't always require you to call us or come in. Uh, You can submit that on your own. The only thing that we do ask is that you do a pretty good search on our catalog to make sure it isn't something that we own first. Absolutely. But the important thing too with the find free and making sure you get your books back on time is a lot of people don't know that A, we have book drops at every single location. Mm -hmm. And at the Ocean County Mall. And at the mall. (laughs) Isn't that cool? Um, County Connections, Ocean County Mall. You know, so those are available 24 hours a day, Mm -hmm. minus the one at the mall. So if you have something in, you know, the backseat of your car and you happen to be, you know, driving home after hours, you can pop that item right back in our... And you can return it at any branch. Any of the 21 locations of the Ocean County Library... So many people don't realize that. So yeah. if you if you were at the beach down in LBI and you ran in there and got a got a book, but you live up in Brick, you can just drop it off at Brick. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what's really cool, and I think that's like a little um, OCL trivia fact gem. That, yeah, yeah, that people don't know, all and a about. nice perk too. You yeah, know? no matter where you are, you can drop off a book. Yeah, that's. That is very cool. But um, if you'd like to know more information, because we have a really nice FAQ section on our website, mm-hmm. and Laura had mentioned this at the beginning, it's the theoceancountylibrary.org, and all the information for Fine Free is on our fines and fees and policies page. Mm-hmm. That's so exciting that we're fine free now. Yeah. I love it. Like, And a lot of hard work went into getting that done, but I think it's a wonderful thing for um, for our community and it's exciting. It is. It's really exciting. Yeah. Okay, everybody. All right. So before we move on to our next question, uh, we're going to cut to a commercial break. Be in the know. OCL's e-newsletters. They send updates, programming, reading recommendations, and more straight to your inbox. Visit our website, theoceancountylibrary.org, or text OCL to... 22828 to sign up today. Standard data and messaging rates may apply. Our next question. This one was fun. And this one required a little bit of digging and a lot of work. So the question is, what is the oldest book that the Ocean County Library owns? So let me tell you, folks, this is not an easy question to answer. I actually went digging in our um, the Wheeler Room at the Toms River Branch. That is our genealogy and historical room right. at the Toms River location. I had to go digging through there to find the answer to this book. And like I said, it was not an easy feat. And it's no no issue of ourselves. It's just publishing was not very reliable <laughs> back in the old days. <laughs> so a lot of the older items that we have actually didn't have publishing information okay. in, in the book itself. So it would have a location and a publishing company, but there would be no year in it Ooh. or a no date or okay. anything like that. So it was a little challenging, but I found some really interesting items that um, I'll, I think will satisfy um, the answer to this. So when I did a, uh, like a record search in our computer, the one I think that technically is the oldest is actually a book by Thomas Paine, which is The American Crisis and a Letter to Sir Guy Carleton on the Murder of Captain Huddy and the Intended Retaliation on Captain Asgall of the Guards. So this was... <laughs> yes, very nice title. You'll notice there's a theme when she reads all these titles of... Uh... <laughs> yes, very specific and very long. Yes. <laughs> so actually, so the author, Thomas Paine, um, he might sound a little familiar. So he was actually the author of the more popular Common Sense. So he actually wrote 
pamphlets back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, So the American Crisis is actually a series of 13 pamphlets written between 1776 and 1783. So the one we have is actually like a bound book. But further inspection, it's safe to say that our copy is not from 1796. Okay. Um, So it was probably a recopy, but there was no identifying information at all in the book. But I just thought it was interesting to note because it's so specific to our location because it's actually on the murder of Captain Huddy and yeah. right across the street, you know, we have Huddy Park. Right. But it was just interesting to see, you know, something so local, local. and, you right. know, Huddy Park. Like, yeah. if you grew up here, you know Huddy Park downtown. So that's what's exciting about the Wheeler Room. Like, you'll find little tidbits about the local history here. So the next item that I found jumps to 1811 and this is a book with a really long title so hold on tight folks it is called the picture of philadelphia giving an account of its origin increase and improvements in arts sciences manufactures commerce and revenue with a compendious view of its societies literary benevolent patriotic and religious its police, the public <laughs> buildings, the prison, and penitentiary <laughs> system, institutions, moneyed, and civil museum. It's so funny how long the title was. And it was actually in the front title page, oh. like, all that long. So, again, that was in 1811. Right, and <laughs> our, our copy, it was definitely rebound, like the cover. And there's no mention of an edition in the book. So well, usually, that's a good clue. yeah, usually when there's no mention of what edition it is, typically means it's a first edition. And when I, you know, looked through the book, it was pretty clear that those were some pretty old pages. Okay. Um, and it might have been repaired at some time. I don't know if okay. it would have been by the library here or wherever the item originated from. Were the pages thin? I'm just curious very, how yes. they were. Yeah, the pages printing back then. The pages were very thin. And, you know, this one, it was a little boring title, you know, so there was just a lot of words and stuff in it. There's nothing in that title that would have piqued your interest. (laughs) That one was funny. So um, the next title that actually I'm I'm confident is the right published um, year, and I'm pretty sure it's an original copy, is from 1824. And it's A Brief Memoir Concerning Abel Thomas. A Minister of Gospel of Christ in the Society of Friends. Yeah, so that one, I was very confident that that was an 1824 copy. And I even tried to do a little digging on the item and Abel Thomas. Some interesting facts, but nothing that really tied to like local history here or whatever. So then the next one that I'm very confident in is 1835 and 1836, and it's actually a directory of Newark with a historical sketch. So this book was actually okay. really cool. It was like a it was like a little thin, um, like hardcover pamphlet, and it was just a directory of people and places in Newark, New Jersey. Like an old school yellow pages. Old school yellow pages, <laughs> but it was just the coolest thing. And actually, I, I took some photos, so maybe we can upload them on our. Ocean County Library Instagram. Yes, yes. Um, and we'll we'll actually probably post a couple of photos about things that we talk about in this episode. So make sure you, if you're on social media, check out the Ocean County Library's Instagram page, mm-hmm. and you can see some of these items that we're talking about. So the um, the thing that was neat about the Directory of Newark is towards the end it had advertisements of local businesses. Oh yeah, and they were just little like blurbs of places and like what they do but they were really pretty like it just it just okay. I don't know it looked neat it was okay. pretty cool so then the next cool item that I found like um, digging around this one I'm very confident 1854 and it's called Graham's Magazine which is actually a periodical that's based out of Philadelphia and it was published from 1841 to 1858 so we have an 1854 copy And in this periodical, you'll find short stories, critical reviews, and information on music and fashion. So it's pretty much just a magazine of the times. But let me tell you, this book was like the size of a brick. It was so thick 
So I don't know if that's how it came, you know, back in the day. I tried to do a little digging of research on it. But there was actually a lot of information about Graham's magazine because Graham bought up different periodical companies and they kind of merged at one point and this thing. But it was really cool because they made it a point that they wanted to put information out there for for the masses. So it wasn't geared towards like just men or women. It was geared for everybody. Okay. So it was really interesting. So then the next one, this is a fictional novel. So I know we want to get into some fun stuff. So this is 1855. And this is a novel called Kate Alsford by Charles J. Peterson. And this is just funny because it's a historical romance set in Southern New Jersey. Oh, boy. Yeah. And what and year was that again? That was 1855. 1855. Okay. Yes. It's funny. The books back in the 1800s, as I was going through all these, they have these beautiful, like, sketches in the front, um, like, against the title page. Okay. So it's kind of a lot of the s- items I was finding were, you know, things about specific people. So they would have the portrait of the person or maybe a scene from the novel. And at the bottom, it would actually say something like page 50. You know, it was a little blurb about probably what was happening on that page. Okay. So they're really pretty, um, these books. And then just the last one I want to mention, 1865. This is a novel called The Hero Girl by Thrace Talman. This title was really interesting because it's been, it was published, I think there was three different years earlier than 1865, and it was published under different titles. So I don't have those listed here, but they had different titles. So we have 1865. This was the first title that was used from the Philadelphia Potter publisher. So it kind of had different titles based on where it was published, which I found really interesting. interesting. So our copy is an 1865 Philadelphia Potter edition. And this is just the story of a brave woman during the Revolutionary War. I didn't dig further, but really interesting. So, yeah, so just a list of some of these really old books that we have. But we, Ocean County Library has a lot of um, materials from the mid to late 1800s. And, you know, we keep them in the in the Wheeler rooms. You know, they're non-circulating items. So that means that you cannot check them out. They're really archived, you know, we we house them. We want to preserve them. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of them are actually in these archival boxes, you know, to protect the covers and all that fun stuff. So, yeah, so if you didn't know this, the Ocean County Library does have a, um, like, an archival room with, with all these old things. So that was just a sampling of some of the older titles that the Ocean County Library has. I apologize I couldn't really narrow down exactly what the (laughs) oldest book was, but just again, it was the lack of information on the title. There's some old stuff we have there, so that was really cool. That is cool. Very cool. So Laura had mentioned real quick, you know, our Instagram page, Mm -hmm. and I wanted to give you our handle, just in case that's something you were interested in. So we are at Ocean County Library NJ. You can find us. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube. And of course, what you're listening to us right now on Anchor FM. Each one of our platforms can be found at the top of our website. We have a handy dandy follow us at the top and the bottom of the page with all of the links right there. And then you can follow us and keep up with what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool to incorporate the pictures of yeah, absolutely. The items that you found. Yeah, on our, it was our really page. it was fun cuz some of these older titles, especially the novels, The Hero Girl had a really pretty cover. Um so you know the old books are usually just bound in, you ornate. know, whatever material, mm-hmm. but then the spine was so ornate and you know gold leaf and all this stuff. So yeah, we'll 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 be sure to post some photos for you guys to see. I'm excited. I haven't I'll even see seen the pictures so <laughs> Cool yeah, it was a, <laughs> it was a lot of fun to to go through some of these. You know, there there was a there was quite a few to dig through. But really quick, what was so funny, I would pick these books that I was like, I'm certain this is like you know 1801 or 17 you know 98, and I'd thumb through it and it's 1925 or you know 
1948, which is still it's like a well loved yes, book. Yes, <laughs> which is still, a, you know, a vintage book. You know, 1920s is now 100 years ago right, almost, yeah. or about, depending on the year. And then some of the ones that were, you know, the, like the Hero Girl was actually in fairly good condition considering it was 1865. So it's just really interesting. And I guess that has a lot to do with, you know, the materials of that, how the book was made and where it was stored, where it was stored, who had it all along, you know, if, if they were travelers or whatever. So it's just fascinating to think about, you know, where these books have been and who's had them. Yeah. Can you you imagine like somebody back in, you know, like Thomas Paine, for instance, I know, I know, you know, or, you know, the person who wrote the hero girl Mm -hmm. and, were they ever thinking that some women in the year 2021 <laughs> would be talking about their book on a a podcast yeah. that, like, through invisible waves, yeah. would be coming to yeah. your home on your, your phone? That, that just blows my mind. It does. It does. And going through these books, too, it was interesting to see where... Um, you know, where they were housed before Ocean County Library received Mm. them. When a couple of the branches were added to the library system, some of their collection came through, you know, because they weren't originally part of that. Sure. So a lot of the older books that they had, you know, came over to the Tom's River branch to go in their um, historical room, the Wheeler Room. But another thing, too, like some of them are stamped, like the Bishop Library, Mm. you, you know, which is in downtown Tom's River. So it's just interesting to think like, you know, because my family, I, you know, some family members mentioned going to the library in the Bishop building. Sure. So it's just neat to think like, oh, like my grandmother might have read this book or, you know, like passed yeah, through, you know, yeah. it's just, it's interesting. History is fun. So Kate, actually, you mentioned um, just a few moments ago about our social media. So I think now is a good time to talk about our beanstack challenge that we have for this podcast do we have the answer so kate i'm gonna let you explain a little bit about beanstack and um some fun stuff we have coming along so i'm gonna explain beanstack and then laura when i'm done will tell us what the secret word is yes for this podcast so with this podcast um through beanstack we are going to do a challenge and Every episode of Do We Have the Answer is going to have a secret word. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need to access Beanstack to participate in this um, secret word challenge. So Kate will explain Beanstack. Yeah, so Beanstack is a one-stop shop for tracking your reading progress um, activities at the library. You can earn badges by logging books if you um, register for any of our challenges that are up. So right now... um, since we are in July, we have our summer reading up. Mm-hmm. The A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten is a rolling yeah, challenge that's, that's still always yeah. open. So there's there's always something in there going on to kind of get you reading, get, yeah, you, get you motivated some stuff. to yeah. read. Yeah, like um, in the winter, we have the winter reading challenge, summer yes. summer reading. So yeah. just different challenges for you to you know motivate you to read and um, you and, know do some fun things at the library. Yeah, so you don't just have to pick up a book and read to participate in the reading challenges. So if you're somebody who prefers to listen to books, mm-hmm. that's completely acceptable. Mm-hmm. Some of our challenges have uh, an aspect where you participate in some of our programming. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of different ways that you can participate. So for hours, what we're asking you to do is sign up for Beanstack. You can go to our library uh, website, the oceancountylibrary.org slash Beanstack to sign up. Uh, Beanstack is also available on their app on uh, iPhones and Androids, Mm -hmm. and you can also access Beanstack through Alexa. Cool. If you're a read, you just happen to finish reading a book, you just, you know, Alexa, open Beanstack, and, you know, I read another 10 pages today. Now that would, (laughs) that would blow Thomas Paine's mind (laughs) if he heard this commercial. It's blowing my mind. That's neat. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. Um, So there's, there's a lot of ways to sign up for Beanstack. Um, It's completely free. So... When you hear our secret word, you will have how much time? Three weeks after? Yeah, a couple weeks after. All the information will be on the Beanstack Challenge for Do We Have the Answer? Time frames and all that stuff. Each episode, there's going to be a secret word. 
and you're going to listen for the secret word, then you're going to go to the challenge, you're going to register, do all that fun stuff, yep. and then each episode is going to have an activity badge attached to it. So when you input the secret word for that episode... For today. Yes. Which is... The secret word today is... Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be our first. Now, secret Laura, word. is that all capitals? Is it all lowercase? How do we put this in? It is all lowercase. Okay. One Perfect. word. Perfect. Podcast. Go to Beanstack, register, sign up, put in that secret word, and listen for the next episode for the next secret word. Mm -hmm. You will be put in for a drawing. Yeah, right? yeah, we're Prizes. gonna. Yep. Um, so we'll give away an OCL swag bag. The items within the, the bag will vary each month. Beanstack allows us to pull a drawing from the people who submit the correct secret word, and then we will send your swag bag to the branch that's closest or most convenient for you for pickup. So again, the secret word is podcast. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right. Awesome. So we have one more question to answer today, yes. right? Yes. And this one definitely ties in with yours. Whoever wrote this, definitely, definitely a library user. <laughs> um, I love visiting the old branches, the smell, the history, the architecture. Are there any cool facts about some of the oldest branches? Ooh. Well. I love fun facts. This is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So I... Um, just so everybody knows, part of our website, if you do the drop down for about, there'll be a section for branches, and each branch has its own about page. You can find out the address, the phone number, the hours, all that good stuff. Uh, how to become a friends member, which is mm. something we'll touch on in a different episode. All that information is there. And there's also a little section, if you scroll down on each branch's page, to kind of review the history of the branch. So I went there and I, I pulled some information. I grabbed from two of our oldest branches and I also found something from a, a more recent branch okay. that has uh, that has some history. Cool. Love so, that. Yeah. So the first one is our Point Beach branch, which two women uh, in the 1890s, Phoebe Curtis and Emily D. Wood, they decided that the little town of Point Pleasant Beach needed, they needed a library. Sure. They rallied up a group of friends. They established a library in 1894. So at that time, they didn't have the little red house to call home yet. Mm -hmm. So they were kind of little pop-up libraries in vacant stores until 1897. So wow. Was a little, yeah, like, hey, one day your library is, you know, there, and then the yeah. next day, oh, or not next day, but, you know, a few weeks later, it's at another vacant right. store. Can you imagine, no. like, taking the entire, like, point beach branch as it is now yeah. and taking the entire collection out and moving no, it to a different no. location. So I wonder if they were like along Arnold Ave, you know, that's where all the stores are now. That'd be interesting. Probably. But, yeah, that's I mean, cool. in most towns, that's, there was that main street yeah. with, mm -hmm. you know, everything going on there. Miss Wood, Miss Emily Wood, she donated $500 and then Miss Curtis ended up giving a piece of land on McLean Avenue. Wow. $500. And, a, and a piece of far, land. Right? Wow. Just willy nilly <laughs> had some land in my back yeah. pocket. Well, thank you to her. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that same year, the founders petitioned uh, the Point Pleasant Borough Beach Branch for some funds, and they were granted an annual budget of, can you, can you guess how much their annual budget was? What year was this again? Eight, we are like 18, right around 1897. Something. Yep. Well, let's see. The cost was 500. <laughs> I'm going to say, I don't know, $200? Oh, no, no, oh, no. no. That, that's such a, a weird answer. No. What? What? $100. You were very oh, close. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that was the wow. annual budget. So the hours were increased and a room was added to the branch in 1922. They also added the children's room mm -hmm. onto that. And then by 1960, the circulation increased. They added another uh, section to the library. Cool. Yeah. They got more money for a room to house the stacks that was opened in 61. And then in 68... The library became part of the Ocean County Library System, uh, where we started providing staff to mm -hmm. them and more materials. But the building itself is still maintained by the Point Pleasant Beach Library Association. 
Nice. There was another expansion in 98, which was the meeting room mm-hmm. at the rear of the building, which people use for programs, presentations, community events, and somewhere to read, study, and relax. Yeah. Yeah, go visit the Point Beach branch. That's a, it's a lovely little branch, beautiful fireplace, oh, which so I imagine nice. is probably original. Yes, it, it is. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. The one cottage room. Yes. I missed that piece in my notes here. Uh, the one cottage room, when the $500 was donated with that piece of land, uh, heated the entire building. Wow. Yep. That's so neat. It is. And that children's section it's is It's adorable. Just- it yeah. kills me every time I go in there. I'm yeah. like, I need this in my house. Yes. <laughs> yeah, this very, <laughs> very cozy and cottagey. So if you're into cottage core, go visit the Point Borough branch. Very cozy, very cozy and fun there. Yeah, a nice it. little garden in the back outside mm-hmm. the meeting room. Yes. It's a nice branch. Yeah, beautiful. And so what else do we have? So our Tuckerton branch, another super beautiful branch. Um, and that's where you grew up going. Right? Yes, this was my hometown branch when I was little, before the Little Lake Harbor branch was built. Mm-hmm. In the, uh, the 90s. So back in the 1800s, uh, Louisa Farrow and Elza Farrow Price, um, they started a reading society and book lending service at the Quaker Meeting House, uh, which is still in Tuckerton. You can visit that today. It's on um, Route 9 and 539. Mm, neat. Beautiful. Yeah. Another beautiful part of the town there. In 1875, the Tuckerton Library Association uh, was founded and they built a library. I don't have this information right now. Uh, Maybe we can follow up on it later. Mm -hmm. But the library was built and then moved 25 years later in 1900 to the Presbyterian Church property on Marine Street. And that church is also still there, too. Cool. Eleanor Price, in 1917, became the library keeper Mm, slash librarian. Fancy title. I like that title. (laughs) I might put that in my email signature for (laughs) So she started that title. Um, She was 21, and she kept that position for 53 years. Wow. Yup, until 1977. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Very cool. So then Dr. and Mrs. Clinton Snyder donated property uh, where the library is right now on Bay and Cox Avenue. They started some construction where the uh, original library was built, and then uh, once they fixed that up, they then moved to the library again from Marine Street. Street. They actually went down in front of the Tuckerton School um, and moved it right back where it is right now. Wow. Yeah. Can you just imagine just yeah, the building floating it around lot. everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> in 72, it became part of the Ocean County Library System. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, just like the Point Beach branch, we, you know, provide staff, we mm-hmm. provide the materials, but the building and the grounds are maintained by uh, the Tuckerton Library Association. Neat. Yeah. The Tuckerton um, branch is the only branch I have yet to visit. Oh, it's beautiful. I know. I have to get there. I've been to every single branch except that one. It's so, yeah, so I nice. It's and lovely. They have, um, for those of you who haven't been there, there's, you know, the more modern side of the library. Mm-hmm. But this this building that they keep moving around town, yeah. it's, it's maintained as like a little museum. Oh, neat. So there's, you know, a lot of artifacts mm-hmm. from town and everything oh, in there. Oh, how fun. Little tidbit, too, um, if you want to know more about some of these branches, um, our 95th anniversary was last year, mm-hmm. and uh, we did a, a YouTube video series. Yeah, oh, yes. I yeah. loved that video. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. The branch managers gave a little history on all of the, the branches, too. Yeah, that was that was a great video. So, yeah, you can you can visit each branch virtually and hear yeah, a little, little yep. snippet about each branch. Yeah, and that, that's pretty much it. In 2002, there was another set of restoration to the original library mm-hmm. with the original woodworking stove and artwork and oh, how nice. everything else in there. I mean, a hometown pride for me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that one. Absolutely. Those are our two so oldest. Old. Yes. So you um, said you have a snippet about a newer branch. So, so I'm excited to hear what you have. Yeah. This is our Lakewood branch, which um, if any people have been there, you're like, why are you talking about the Lakewood branch? That's a newer branch. Yeah. But it does have some history. The earliest written record of a town library goes back about 145 years mm-hmm. from now. Back then, Lakewood was called Bricksburg. Ooh. And the library itself was maintained by the Bricksburg Library Association. It was housed in a rent-free room and had 40 volumes. Anybody who wanted to partake in taking anything out of mm-hmm. the library at the time had to pay. How much do you think they had to pay each year to be a library patron? A year? Sorry, I keep quizzing be... you no, on No, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Um, 
35 cents. Oh. You would have you wouldn't have gotten a lot of money then. Uh, it was one whole dollar. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, yes. Yep. So the annual funding was provided through lectures, plays, cakes, rummage sales, parties, and dances. Did you say cakes? Yeah, like cake sales. It must be. Oh, yes. How fun. <laughs> Uh, eventually, Bricksburg became the township of Lakewood, and then it changed its name to the Lakewood Library at that point. In 1903, the collection started to include children's materials, which it never did before. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Stuff you don't think about. You always yeah. think the library, you think of, you know, children's teens. Yeah. Adults, the whole yeah. thing. No. Then there was a membership increase. Doesn't I don't know how much that was. Could have been, you know three dollars at that point (laughs) by 1917 so at the time the library was constructed on monmouth avenue which now is uh catholic charities which isn't um it's right around the bend from the branch um so the building is still there it is yeah yep and catholic charities now now lives there and at the time, the funding was provided by the Carnegie Corporation. Okay, yes, Carnegie yep. Libraries. Yep. Okay. He provided private donations. <laughs> I'm going to quiz you again with more monetary <laughs> questions. What is this? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Um, Miss C- Catherine Hinsdale, she was hired as a librarian for how much a day? What's her salary per a day? A day? Yes, per day. This can't even get you gas anymore. So I'll well, give you a, I'll yes. give you a little hint um, there. Two dollars. Yes. Oh, you got it. Woo. Okay. Gold star. Yeah. So she was a friend of Lakewood's most illustrious citizens, Ooh. John D. Rockefeller. I was going to say, was it Mr. Rockefeller it was, himself? Yeah. Yes. Um, he donated a beautiful circulation desk. In 95, the Lakewood branch that we know today uh, was built at the current location on Lexington. And in 98, Lakewood's, you know, their citizens voted to join the library. And it was made effective January 1st, 1999. 99. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even though the branch, the building, yeah. the whole thing itself, yeah. you know, is newer. You know, it's, there's a lot of history there amazing. behind the, in the, here. the... Yes. Yeah. I didn't know Lakewood was called Bricksburg. Now you know, but rich in history. No, that was that was awesome. I didn't know all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you think of Rockefeller and Carnegie. You yeah, think of New York City. Yeah, fancy things like that. Yeah, you don't think of you know. Ocean yeah, County, Ocean County, New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna have to take a drive through there because I'd love to see the original building. Oh, that was a lot of fun um, historical facts about some of the um, Ocean County branch locations. Yeah. Um, So thank you to the folks who submitted the questions for this episode. We just want to remind everybody, we would love to hear your questions. Your questions is what is going to keep this podcast going. Mm -hmm. So please, if you think of any questions, you can visit our website. Again, that's www.theoceancountylibrary.org. Just go to our events page. Look for uh, Do We Have the Answer in the events. You can click any of the events. We have it set up weekly. So if you just click any of those, it'll bring you to a form. And you just submit your question. So get those questions to us so we can keep answering. I'm excited to hear what the next questions are. I'm excited to learn more about the library, too. Me, too. I mean, how we've learned so much, like, just, just in these few questions that we've, you know, answered so far. I mean... It's fun to know where we live. It is so rich in history. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and the library itself, just library in general, is a fun, mysterious place because you can just learn about anything there. Yes, you can. So, yes, so submit those questions. Go visit your library. Go get a library card. Start using the Dewey Decimal System. And um, we'll be back at you with some more questions. Yep, we'll see you next time.